What's going on everyone? So another down day in the overall markets. What I have pulled up is the triple Qs, the NASDAQ 100 ETF. We are currently down just about a percentage point and $4 on the day trading at 333.91. So we're getting a little bit of a relief bounce here. One thing that I do want everyone to keep in notice uh, and on the top of your minds is I'm seeing so many people on social media, Twitter, YouTube calling for a stock market crash. Is the, is the market crashing? Guys, this is not a stock market crash. OK, there's a lot of things going on in the world that is causing a lot of selling pressure, inflation being one, interest rates being two, Russia and Ukraine being three, amongst others. Right. So, you know, as we kind of kicked off this year, what was it before the, the um, coronavirus new variant? Um, you know, before that, we had that big selling day in the day before uh, Thanksgiving when the market was open half day, you know, there was no one home to protect the house and the burglar walked in when there's no volume, uh, things were going to sell off. So we really started to see the signs, the sell signs coming, you know, late November into December, and obviously January and February. But this is not a market crash. Okay, people are not panicking running for the hills. Um, nobody is selling out of every single stock and going all cash. Um, is there a lot of cash on the sidelines? Of course, there is. Uh, there, there will continue to be a lot of cash on the sidelines until this market proves that, you know, we are coming out of the mud. And what I'm saying is that technically on the triple Qs, we are not in a 20% correction yet. I think that price would take us down to around 327. So the area that I want to look at here is this 332.25 lows that we hit in the after hours pre-market session from yesterday. These are going to be our short term lows here. If the bulls can defend this 332, then obviously we're going to get, you know, some relief bounces. But I just want you to understand that this is not a market crash. Everything is working and playing out to the technical levels almost pretty much to a T. Are we trading under supply? That's going to act as resistance. What is our next area of demand? We're getting those relief bounces there. So what I could see is if we do start cracking below 332, we do have room down to 324. This is going to put the index in a bear market. Now, just because the index goes into an overall bear market, are some stocks going to get hit? Meaning, are some stocks going to lose levels that they're currently trading at now? Of course. But does that mean every single day, you know, as long as the market is open, that stocks are just going to be red, 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 red. Of course not. Right now, I don't think it's time to be buying the dip. I also do not think that it's time to kind of put on swing positions just due to the overall volatility in the market. But there is opportunities each and every single day that stocks are providing intraday bounces. There is opportunities each and every single day that stocks are providing flushes to the downside. So even though you may have a portfolio where you're holding long positions, you do not have to let them bleed out. You do not have to let them just sit and go lower and lower and lower and lower and lower without being proactive and doing something about it. You could take a little bit of cash and you can day trade these moves until the market kind of figures itself out until we start to sort of settle down. So with that being said, even if we do go into a corrective uh, bear market, this is not a market crash. You are going to get a significant bounce. Now, the bounce from the 324, 325, 326 area back into 330, 332, and perhaps even back into 340 is going to give you opportunities from the bull standpoint to get in and do some day trading. Now, just because, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that have, you know, kind of commented on some of my posts on Twitter or stock twits or even on YouTube and said, you know, oh, you're, you're just a day trader. You know, I, I don't want to hear, you know, anything from day trading. Well, it's like this, you know, even though I'm a full time day trader, option scalper does not mean that because you're a long term investor that you can't participate in the market and try to make some money on a day to day basis. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being a day trader. There's nothing wrong with shorting stocks. It doesn't mean that you do not believe in the company. I, I, for example, love Tesla, but have I shorted it dozens, hundreds of times? Absolutely. Um, because at the end of the day, I still have to provide food and put, uh, you know, provide for my family and put, you know, uh, pay this mortgage and pay my car payments and stuff like that. So I'm not going to really get too caught up and I don't believe in the company. It's not about that. I think the narrative really has been painted with a lot of newer traders that came into the market, maybe in 2020, around that COVID, um, around that COVID decline, 
time where everything was kind of just, you know, moving higher. A lot of people got into the notion where, you know, if you're a short seller, you know, you're you're evil, you know, you're on the other side. Has nothing to do with that, guys. Uh, people have been shorting stocks for for probably longer than, than you've been trading the market. Let's just put it that way. Probably maybe even longer than you've been on this earth. Um, you know, people have been shorting stocks. It doesn't necessarily mean that they think the company is horrible. People have been day trading stocks. There's full-time traders at the institutional level all the way down to your smallest of a retail trader. So just because someone is a day trader doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad. Doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to always lose money. There's also this, you know, notion that, you know, so many day traders lose money. And, and that statement is absolutely correct. But there's also a ton of day traders who are profitable on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a quarterly basis as well. You just have to understand, you know, risk management and you have to understand technical analysis. So when it comes down to what is the difference between really swing trading uh, stocks, you know, long term, three, six months, quarters out down the way and investing versus day trading is day trading is not really going to care about you know, uh, the fundamentals, you're not really going to take into a fact, uh, you know, what is the company doing this quarter? What, what new updates does the company have? Sure. Those catalysts are going to, um, you know, make stocks go higher and or lower. But if you're just looking at it from a technical level, you kind of already know where the stock is going just based on the technicals. So if we're just kind of looking at the triple Qs here, if the triple Qs begin to lose this 332, 332 is going to act as a level of resistance. 332 to 334, that zone, that area is gonna act as a level of resistance. So if we do start cracking below that, you're gonna have a short opportunity back into that 324 area. But just know that you are going to get a bounce. And just because we get a bounce, I think a lot of newer traders, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of newer traders, when I see them you know, on social media, a lot of new traders think that when we get a bounce or maybe we have a one, two day rally, it's kind of like, you know, oh, the bears, you know, never learn, things are going to go back higher. But it's like, it, that's not what it's about. Even in the best bull market, you have red days even in the worst bear market, you're going to have green days. But the overall direction of the market right now is definitely on the sell side. So you need to be more sell biased, not saying that you can't play long. So if that doesn't make sense to you, it means that if levels and lows start to get taken out, we're going lower. When we get those bounces, those bounces are not going to have any follow through. As long as we are trading below macro levels of supply, the bounces are what they are. It's just a bounce. If I was to take a basketball and stand on my roof and I bounce the basketball down, it's going to go down. So you can think about the stock market like this. As I release this basketball from the top of my roof, it's going to go down. But when it hits, let's say, uh, let's say I have a patio table on the floor. Of, of where I'm dropping this basketball from, it's going to bounce. And then when it falls off of the patio uh, table, it's going to fall back down on the floor. And it being that it still has momentum, it's going to bounce again. And then finally, when it, the momentum starts to die, it's going to hit a floor. And when it hits the floor, you can think about walking down from that rooftop, grabbing that basketball, coming all the way back up and dropping it again. And when it falls the next time, you're going to get that bounce. I know that analogy really, you know, is, you know, not related to trading, but you kind of have to think of it that way in a down market or a sell biased market or a quote unquote bear market over 20% on the index, you are still going to have bounces. It doesn't mean that things are going to go higher. It just means that stocks are moving up. There's a big difference between stocks going higher and stocks just moving up. There's a big difference between stocks going down or stocks moving lower. A stock that's going down might particularly be in, um, you know, in a bear in a, in a bull market so in a bull market you're going to have those pullbacks the stock is just going down but it's not essentially going lower in a sell-sided market you're going to have stocks that go up but they're essentially not going higher i hope that kind of makes sense guys if you are interested in day trading maybe you guys want to uh, get these levels of stocks that you can trade both long and short on an intraday basis where i'm kind of going over live technical analysis join my community join that chat room that link is down in the description box below if you guys would like to learn how to understand the 
process of scalping and you know what indicators to use what when should you be trading stocks what stocks should you be trading definitely check out my website evolutiontraders.com as i have uh two video courses one of them on scalping and one of them on understanding the process of trading both for beginners as well as experienced traders it's going to give you a different kind of outlook on how i'm particularly trading and what has made me consistent because at the end of the day when it comes down to trading it's not about how much you win or how much you lose but it's about being consistent. If I can consistently keep my losses very, very small, but my wins a lot larger, in the end, I'm going to come out a winner. And that's what it's all about. At the end of the week, at the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year, you want to consistently come out a winner on top. And if you're interested in doing that, definitely check out my website, evolutiontraders.com. Also subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up on this video, and I'm gonna see you guys on the next one.